Welcome to Simulation TV. My name is Apollo Vandenberg, and I'm going to walk you through some basic meshing practices. Today's objectives are to understand a brief overview of meshing, as well as uh, understand and visualize the impact meshing can have on your results. So to start out with a brief overview of, of what meshing is, um, the mesh is actually going to define our model for the analysis. So it's going to take what we have represented in, in the CAD geometry um, and, and represent that with, uh, with elements so that we can actually process results or analyze our results um, throughout the domain. So um, anything that we have within the meshed world is what we're using for our, our analysis. The simulation CFD automatic mesher will, um, will choose by default elements based on the local curvature and edge lengths for all volumes. So as you can see with uh, the capacitors here, as well as the heat sink, um, you know, inherently we're going to get a slightly tighter mesh there to, to capture the, the steeper gradients that, that would pertain to uh, the heat coming off the heat sink and, and some of those capacitors. So to talk a little bit about um, what we're looking for with our results or with, with our meshing specifically and how it pertains to the results, um, we want to make sure that we are adjusting the mesh size to capture those steep gradients, whether it's with uh, the velocity gradient, you know, thermal gradients, or, or even pressure. Um, so here on the left, you'll see that you know, this is a, a flow through a, a small you know, channel. Um, you know, the mesh is definitely too coarse here. You know, we're not representing the shape of this geometry very well. It doesn't look round. Um, you know, and then the flow, the, the flow gradient across the gap itself, um, it, isn't being captured very well. You can also see that we have a small recirculation zone right here that, that isn't being captured either. So overall, it's not a bad starting place if we wanted to get uh, an initial understanding of where some of those gradients might be. Um, but it's not something that we'd really want to use uh, moving forward with uh, design trends or, or even uh, you know, analytical results. Um, so here we have a, a, you know, a much tighter mesh. Uh, you know, it's, it's much... Uh, much more accurate with uh, the shape of the geometry here. You can see that the, the, the mesh across the gap in this direction, um, you know, that we have six to eight nodes uh, across that gap, so we can really capture the velocity profile and, and even how the flow comes into the domain and, and creates that, that recirculation region um, is much better defined. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more ab about these best practices or, or, or rules of thumb um, as we move forward, but just take note that you know as you're looking at your results, if you see gradients that are are kind of like this and where they're kind of following the the mesh structure a little bit, um, you know there could be a gradient there that we need to refine to to capture a little bit more appropriately. So if we wanted to actually refine those uh, those models to to capture the mesh, you know how how can we do that? Um, you know we're we're going to use the controls. So if you look at the top of your toolbar there's a volume surface and even edge controls. Um, using that we can pick volumes or we can pick specific surfaces in the area of interest and use the size adjustment slider and, and refine the mesh distribution on those entities. Um, you know, at the same time, feel free to leverage uh, CAD volumes. So here you can see that we have a, a flow obstruction in, in 2D. We actually have a, a, an extra CAD generated volume um, here to, to help concentrate elements, use that as, as a, a refinement region. Um, and you can even use CFD mesh refinement regions, which is what you see here with uh, the black dots um, right at the end here. So feel free to take any combination of, of manually selecting entities to refine, you know, catted regions and CFD mesh refinement regions uh, to be able to, uh, to get the mesh that will, will capture the end results. So what we're shooting for, you know, overall, you know, as you're looking at your first pass analysis, that, that proof of concept to make sure, you know, where we need to, to refine the mesh, you know, we can start out with a relatively coarse mesh. You know, if we're doing something with constant property materials, we can typically use uh, a slightly coarser mesh. Um, but as we go for that final analysis, um, you know, or if we're trying to match test results, using actual material properties that are, going to, that are going to vary with respect to temperature, you know, we're going to want to refine the mesh, have a tighter mesh to capture all of those gradients. You know, obviously, as, as that mesh size goes up, you know, the, the time it takes, you know, as you can see, um, the time it takes to compute that, since the complexity is increasing, um, is also going to increase as well. So some uh, final you know, initial uh, 
rules of thumb, you know, for, for thin flow passages, you know, if we had something like this, you know, we're not really capturing or, or getting, uh, you know, the entrance effects or, or really that flow passage captured very well. It's not a bad starting place, but ideally we're going to want six to eight nodes across whatever the thinnest direction is. So, you know, if we look at a slightly better version of that, now we can actually see how we'd be able to capture flow coming in and out of this channel uh, more appropriately. If we're dealing with circular objects, you know, here we can see that there's a, you know, a, a, a circular aspect connecting, you know, the inside and outside of this segment here. It doesn't really look round. You know, we want to make sure that any tubes or pipes actually look appropriately round. Um, so what, what that means is we're going to be shooting for, you know, six to eight nodes around the circumference, sometimes a little bit more um, if we're actually trying to match test results. So you can see here now with a refined match, this looks nice and smooth. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to let us know. Feel free to take a peek at any of the other simulation TV videos that we have on mesh diagnostics and uh, meshing. Thanks.